Now that we have free undamped motion of a mass spring system under our belt, let's introduce damping. So the idea here, we have a new force, the damping force, it's going to arise due to friction or air resistance, water resistance, whatever medium you're working with. In this case, our new force is going to be proportional to our velocity. So we're going to have a constant alpha. Okay, that's going to be called the damping constant. Alpha is positive. And our force is equal to minus alpha times x prime. Okay. The way we work that into our equation is to move it to the right-hand side, and then in this equation, m is our mass, k is our spring constant. Now, if we divide through by m, push everything to the left-hand side, we'll have this ordinary differential equation here, and then we can use the same initial conditions that we had before. So the idea is we're going to have our mass spring system, okay, we're going to raise our mass up to height 1. And then we're going to release, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, and note, when we raise to height 1, before we release, velocity is at 0, so it's in free fall for a second, and then the spring immediately starts acting on it. Now, characteristic equation for ODE is going to determine what kind of solution that we get. So there are going to be three cases. So what we'll do is, we're going to take capital D equal to B squared minus 4C, if D is negative, we're going to call our system underdamped. If D is positive, it'll be overdamped. And if D is equal to zero, we'll have critically damped. So for this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we're underdamped. Now, to get B and C so that this case holds, let's try B equals 2, C equal to 5. So it's going to give us the ODE x double prime plus 2x prime plus 5x equals zero. Go to our characteristic polynomial, we get our roots. So in this case, the roots are not going to be real, they're going to be complex. So our general solution is going to be in the form x of t equals a e to the minus t cosine 2t plus b e to the minus t sine of 2t. We take its derivative, okay, so we have to work all that out. So that's product rule and chain rule. Then we plug in our initial conditions. So we put zero in for x and x prime, what's going to come out is a is equal to 1, b is going to be equal to 1 half. Here's our solution for x t. Here's x prime t. Let's put them together, get an idea of some of the behavior of our solution. So if I try to isolate the e to the minus t cosine 2t, e to the minus t sine of 2t, what we'll do is square those, add them together, Cosine squared plus sine squared is going to be equal to 1. So what will come out when you work this out is going to be e to the minus 2t. Now, if I take the limit of the right-hand side, as t goes to infinity, it's going to go to 0. Since I have the sum of two non-negative numbers on my left-hand side, that means they have to go to 0 separately. So we'll have x prime going to 0, and then because of that, we'll have the x also has to go to 0. If we graph our functions, they're going to look something like this. Now, what does this mean for our system? In the free undamped case, okay, we raise our mass to height 1, we release, and then our mass oscillates between minus 1 and 1 forever. In our case here, we raise to height 1, we release. Okay, what will happen now is it's going to oscillate forever, but every time we cross 0, we cover a little bit less ground. So, even though this thing oscillates forever, for human beings, it's going to look like it's going to stop at some point. Okay, so at some point, the ground's covering is so small, we can't even notice it. So that's what damping's doing. It's going to take away the amount of distance you can travel. Let's take a look at our trajectory in the phase plane. Now, what we'll do is, x1 is equal to x, x2 is equal to x prime. We're going to pick a t, run it through our equations. It'll give us an x and an x prime. We'll plot that point in the x1, x2 plane. If we let t run over all points in our domain, it's going to give us a curve we call the trajectory. So the idea here is we're going to plot position against velocity, and then our trajectory just tells us how position and velocity hang together with our solution. 
Okay, so we don't want just the points though, we also wanna know about the slope field. So the idea here, we're gonna take x1 and x2, take the derivatives with respect to t, what comes out, okay, since we're looking at autonomous ODE, we can rewrite those derivatives in terms of x1 and x2. So do that as so. Then I could divide these. So that'll give me a formula for derivative of x2 with respect to x1. Now, let's go have a formula in terms of x1 and x2. And the way we think of this, this is gonna be the slope of the tangent line to our trajectory at the point x1, x2. Okay, let's take a look at a few points. So we'll pick good points for t. So that's gonna be zero, pi eights, pi fours, pi halves. Note these are gonna be good domain values for cosine 2t and sine of 2t. Because we have e to the minus t out in front, we're gonna need a calculator to work these out though. So t equals zero, that's our initial condition. We get one comma zero. Okay, our slope field has value, okay, undefined. So it means a vertical line. So we plot that here. Okay, and then our arrow faces down to indicate the direction of increasing time. For pi eights, okay, that's gonna give me a 0.72 minus 1.2. So our point's here. Slope field gives me a one, so we're at a 45 degree angle. So put our arrow in that direction. For pi fours, we get 0.23 minus 1.1. Value the slope fields of minus one. So again, 45 degrees, but in that direction, put our arrow in the so. Then finally, pi halves, we get minus 0 0.20. So we're on the x1 axis. Slope field's undefined, so it's a vertical line, so we make it facing up. Okay, so that's okay, our trajectory and slope field for a few points. Okay, some things we can note. First off, okay, if I'm on x1 axis, let's take a look at what's happening here. So that's gonna be where x2 is equal to zero. So that'll be the multiples of pi halves. So sine is equal to zero when you're at a multiple of pi. Put a two in there, it's gonna be multiples of pi halves. So what's happening up top? Well, okay, if we forget about the e to the minus t, what's left is gonna be periodic. So it's gonna bounce back and forth between positive and negative. But because we have this e to the minus t term, when t gets larger and larger, it's gonna drive our magnitude down to zero. So what we're doing here is we're just bouncing back and forth till we hover close to zero. So that's just what your spring's doing. Now, if you note, we might suspect that we have a sink at zero, zero. Because if you notice our trajectory, so we let time go on, that thing is just gonna get closer and closer and closer to zero, zero. Now, we could check that. Okay, so we're looking for a critical point here. So let's see if we can find all of them. So to do that, we just take x1, x2, take the derivative with respect to t, set both of them equal to zero. So when we do that, we're gonna be setting x2 equal to zero. Then I have minus two x2 minus five x1 equal to zero. X2 is zero, so x1 also has to be zero. So our only critical point is gonna be at zero, zero. And we'll note it's gonna be a sink. So if we took any trajectory of any solution for the ODE with a different initial value, it's gonna home in on zero if we let t go to infinity. Now, if we wanna get all trajectories for solutions to our ODE with different initial values, we use the same trick that we used in the free undamped case. So there, what do we do? We only considered a certain type of initial value. Then we explored the autonomous property to show that if we have a solution to our ODE, by time shift forward or backwards in time, we get another solution to our ODE. Then we found a set of initial conditions. So if we took all the trajectories, they covered the entire plane which means we have all initial values covered. That's just time shifting to get to one of those. Now, in this case, same idea. Instead of raising to height one, we're just gonna raise up to height A, and then that's gonna give us, okay, when we work it out, this'll be our explicit solution for X and X prime. That's gonna give us a spiral. It's gonna start at A zero instead of one zero. And then you note, as we let A range over all the positive numbers. Okay, those spirals and the point zero, zero cover the entire plane. 
So we'll have all of our initial conditions covered if we time shift. Another thing to note, if we have any overlaps, okay, so note in the free on damp case, we had ellipses, the ellipses didn't overlap. In this case, we'll have overlaps as we consider all positive A, but the only way we get overlap is if we have a trajectory sitting inside of a larger trajectory. So it's gonna be small spiral sitting inside of larger spiral. Let's take another look at our slope field. So our formula for slope was minus two, minus five X one over X two. Here the slope is for the tangent line to the trajectory at the point X one, X two. Now, if I'm on a line going through the origin, then X one over X two, it's gonna be fixed. So that means on those lines, our vectors coming from the slope field are all gonna point in the same direction, depending on what side of the origin that you're on. Now, if I pick a few values for say our M, multiply by minus five, okay, what do we get? So for instance, if this minus five M is equal to two, then you'll note our slopes are gonna be equal to zero. So that means on this line here, X two equal to minus five X one over two. Okay, it's going like this. They're all gonna have horizontal vectors coming off of them. If we have, okay, our M undefined, so X two equal to zero, that's gonna mean we're looking at, okay, the X one axis, and then our slopes are all gonna be undefined, meaning we have vertical tangent lines. So along the X one axis, we have all vectors pointing down or straight up. Okay, and then you could check out a couple others just so that you believe this. So for instance, if we had minus five M equal to minus one, that would be this line here. And then our slopes are all minus one, so they're gonna be at 45 degree angles. Now, in general, okay, we can do what we did for free undamped motion. There we could check the sign of the slope in each quadrant. Here things won't break up so nicely. So the idea would be we find the line where Okay, our slope equation is equal to zero and undefined. If we know both of those lines, then our regions are determined just by checking one point for positive or negative. Okay, well, we've already found that this line gives us, okay, our slope field equal to zero, and then our X1 axis gives us slope field undefined. So I have these four regions here. Okay, if you take a point in each region, then you'll see you'll have negative slope, in this region and this region, positive slope here and here. Okay, and that'll agree with what we had when we checked this line. As a final note, let's consider the general ODE, X double prime plus BX prime plus CX equals zero, where B and C are positive, B squared minus four C is negative. So this is gonna be the ODE for the general free under damp motion of a mass spring system. Okay. One thing we need to worry about are the solutions for this ODE, in fact, damped. So what we mean here is, if you notice in the example we looked at, we had E to the minus T in our solution, and that's what drove everything down to zero. So one thing that could go wrong is, if we had, say, E to the T, then when I release our mass, we're gonna oscillate, but instead of damping down to zero, we're gonna get wilder and wider oscillations. Now, if we consider the characteristic polynomial for this equation, we take its roots, what we'll notice, we get minus b over two, and then we'll have some imaginary term. So we stick the imaginary term into cosine and sine in the general solution, and then this minus b over two is gonna go into the exponential part. So now, since b is positive, you note this thing is gonna be a genuine damping term. So as we go off to infinity, that's gonna drive everything down to zero. 